Hey everybody, this is Perch. One of the things that I do at times is to try and explain kind of why, why behind things. And I, I have a feeling that uh, not a, not half, but a good percentage of people don't really care <laughs> um, when I do this. When I talk about like, why does somebody behave this way? It's almost like going into that kind of analysis is more irritating to people than anything else. Um, but I, I still operate on this premise of uh, talking through this stuff helps me kind of come to grips with what's going on and, and helps me understand my customer audience a little bit more. I, I think, you know, I, I, I take a step back every now and then with this show and kind of what I'm doing. So I ask myself this, I would say not, not every week, but on a regular basis, like why, why am I doing this? The reality is this show uh, doesn't take a lot of time. Uh, it, it's it, in many cases I record sometimes with a nice microphone at a desk quality is okay. Sometimes in a car, like right now, because I'm on doing a commute and I want to have some company. Uh, I'm burned out of listening to the radio. <laughs> and the, so, you know, there's not a lot of time that goes into this. The, the, the production of these videos, um, I think goes very, very quickly for me. When I get the audio, throw some art up there, the entire thing takes 10 minutes at most, and then up it goes. And I, I'm sure I could put more time into it, but you know, I, I would only do that if this was intending to be my job, where I was expecting to make some money off of it, or if it was a source of pride, meaning, you know, I, I needed to win, I needed to, to beat other people. And, you know, I don't care about winning a subscriber race or a like race or anything else. It, it really doesn't bug me. Every now and then I get mail and I'm going to do a video of like, here's some mail I get. I get somebody saying, ah, this is why you'll never have as many viewers as comics explained. It's like, yeah, okay. I mean, sure. I, I don't expect that I will. <laughs> I, did, I never expected I'd have a thousand subscribers to be blunt. Um, so I'm, I'm glad I'm putting some things here that help entertain people and, and pass the time of day. But to me, a lot of it, I, the perspective of what I do is, is really what I think a shop owner does. And I think some of the conversations I've had in a email or, or in the background, um, the people I think get the mentality of where I'm coming from most of the time are people who have run a business, either uh, their own business, a retail business, or been in a position of business development or sales or something within a company. Those people seem to get where I'm coming from better than others. I watch other people really struggle, like, why is he doing all this analysis? And who cares what these people think? And what, what is with the nuance? You can just generalize, you know, kind of stuff. And it's um, it, it really kind of, I think, defines the people who have run a business and not run a business. Because if you run a business, you learn, I think, relatively quickly that your per, you, have to, you have to compartmentalize your personal view on things uh, to what the market is telling you. And you also have to learn that the details of what people are doing uh, matters. And there's a lot of people who go into, oh, you know, creating scenarios is straw manning. You know, if you're, if you're creating a scenario of this customer acts this way, let's test it out. That's, that's straw manning an argument. And I, I mean, I, that's one of those words that gets tossed around. People, I think, always feel like uh, they use it and then they're picturing themselves like as Sigmund Freud or they've got like, I'm using these intelligent words. And it's like, eh, not, not really. I mean, I don't know. You see that, you see that phrase get thrown around enough on Twitter and it's like, okay, <laughs> you know, it's, it's like uh, a, a lot of these phrases uh, that, that come up um, are, are, they just get so overused. They, they, lo they lose all meaning. But the, the point here is that, you know, if you're a business owner, you kind of got to think about these things. And this is where, when I've talked to creators and I've talked to people who I think get value out of this show, hopefully, or they learn something or it helps them or whatever it happens to be, it's usually stuff around thinking about the business, about kind of having these conversations about, look, we've got some theories, let's test them out. Let's figure out why things work the way they work. And most importantly, being able to say the things I like, the things I want to do, the things that, uh, that as a creator, I think are great ideas. Um, I can still be proud of my great idea, but at the end of the day, I also have to get that great idea landing with an audience. If I fail to do that, then, you know, it's, it's really my pet project idea that lives in a, in a vacuum and goes nowhere. And I think that there's a lot of, of creators and people who are in comics, writers, artists, publishers, editors, etc., who 
they they kind of have this inner conflict with themselves about whether what they're doing matters or not. They 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 have a great idea. They think it's great. What they really like is if the customers would also see things the same way they do. They would also see this as a great idea. And this isn't certainly by any stretch of imagination limited to comics. I think people come up with great ideas all the time in their own heads, and they fail to land them with a market. Once upon a time, Microsoft had this thing called the Zoom. It was a portable media player, and man, it was the best thing ever. Microsoft was so convinced this was going to be amazing, everybody would have it. The Zoom was incredible, and people didn't buy it. And there was this weird period for a couple years, and and frankly, today, I'm reminded of this because I was having a chat with somebody on uh, Friday where he was still bringing up the Zoom as this amazing device that just people weren't smart enough to understand. And I, I said, but they didn't buy it. So he's like, yeah, but the market wasn't ready. The market, the people just weren't ready. It was way too smart of a, of a product for people to, to get. And, uh, you know, if we just waited like two years, I'm, I'm sure we would have, we would have sold a ton of them, but it was ahead of its time. And I, I, I'm listening to the guy and I'm like, no, nah, it just didn't sell because <laughs> the iPod sold tons. Like Apple did not have problems getting the iPod out there. Microsoft had a lot of problems getting the Zoom out there. And, and for what it's worth, and then the iPod is something that's come and gone. You know, you don't see those running around. People just have music on their, on their phones or wherever else they have them. Um, you don't have people running around with iPods anymore, for that matter. So the idea that, like, the Zoom was a super smart, intelligent product, and it was really just the, the, the kids were wrong. Everybody, it's, everybody else was just wrong for not recognizing its brilliance is something that happens in comic books a lot uh, with the creators and the publishers. There's this idea of, like, I've got this amazing idea. And nobody liked it. And it's because of all the reasons. They're too bigoted. They're too racist. They're too stupid. They're too stuck in nostalgia. They're, they're too this or that or whatever it happens to be. It's absolutely the customer's fault that they didn't get the fact that this thing was brilliant. And, you know, uh, that they're, they're wrong. And then I think there becomes, uh, on top of that, another level of psychosis that not, not all the creators slip into by any stretch of imagination, but a few of them get here. And that's where, in addition to just feeling like the customers are wrong, actually coming to hate the customers for being wrong, that not only were they too dumb to accept your genius idea, your genius concept, but they're actually, they're actually to be despised. Like it's, it's not enough that they're too stupid. We actually should, we we need to come up with ways to eliminate them from the gene pool. Like we need to, we need to, they're, they're so wrong they're dangerous and bad and we've got to get rid of them somehow. And it, it, that's a case where like you look at a comic comes out and it's like, Oh, this doesn't sell. Well, you know, the market didn't go for it. And, and uh, they, they were, they were wrong. We got sabotaged on that. We were wrong. And to fix this problem, we need to get rid of the old market and get a new one. <laughs> that's the, that's where I've, I've been at cons. I've talked to writers uh, who are, who get irritated that the comic that they put out didn't go over well. And there's a lot of reasons why things may not go over well, by the way. There are many of which have nothing to do with them, the writer. You know, maybe, yes, maybe the story sucked. Maybe the timing was wrong. Maybe, you know, it's it's like, uh, what's it? here's an example that, that's going to come out of nowhere. But do you remember the film Donnie Darko? Have you heard of that? You probably have because it's become this cult classic of a movie. But did you realize that that movie came out into the theaters in October of... Uh, of 2001. Um, do you know why having planes crashing in October of 2001 in the movie theaters was probably a hard sell for people? Yeah, there, there might have been something that happened about 30 days earlier that turned people off from seeing movies where planes crashed and there was disasters, you know, in the theaters. So, was the movie a good movie? I, that's up to you. I, I think it's an okay movie. I think it's overrated. But regardless, um, it it struggled. It struggled because it was a high concept, weird movie to explain. People couldn't figure out if it was a horror movie or a drama movie or what's going on. And then you had you had plane crashing as part of the movie. And you know, one month after September 11th is you know bad timing. So comic books can be like that. There could be a lot of reasons why they fail, but 
the importance, and I, I think the reason I do so many videos on the topic and I, I talk about this and, and the, the healthy conversations I think I have with people in the industry uh, are really, do really come along around to, uh, you know, you have to have more of an understanding of your audience. Ideally, a respect for your customers. That would be great. Having a respect for the people who are paying you money is a good, good plan. But failing that, at the very least, uh, an, a level of understanding, a level of appreciation for what they're thinking. You don't have to agree with it. Here's the crazy part that I think a lot of people struggle to understand in today's day and age is that you, you don't have to agree with someone else to understand their perspective, to recognize and admit that it exists. And, and their perspective doesn't have to be evil and hateful and terrible because at the end of the day, we're all linked to each other in some fashion. And again, maybe this is just my perspective, having run a store and run a business and been dependent on other people's money, their attention and their time in order to, you know, succeed, feed myself, feed my family. If, if you if you disconnect these things, if you if you start to, to separate out this concept of um, we, you know, it, I can have my own opinion. It's awesome. If I completely divorce myself from everybody else's opinion, then the only person I can truly com comfortably, reliably sell to is, is me. And unless I'm a billionaire, uh, that's bad news because I'm not going to be able to support my lifestyle with only my own money. I'm going to need to, to attract other people. And, and some people call this pragmatism. You can call it a number of different things. Some people have pointed out for sure that, you know, hey, we're just an independent contractor. We don't really care about the long-term viability and I'll care much more about what the customers think when I'm doing my own creator own product. Fine. I, I mean, I guess that's a slimy way to think about it, but sure, whatever you want, whatever you put you to sleep at night, I guess. Um, at the end of the day, you have to have a connection between your customer base and the product you're selling. And you do have to think about why. You do have to create quote unquote straw man arguments so you can test out your theories. You do have to talk about these things or think about these things. You do need to, to process it. If you don't, then you're just very confident that you are 100% right in everything. And that is a 100% guaranteed way you fail. There's been nobody who's been able to completely divorce themselves from any outside opinion, feedback, anything and be successful. Even Steve Jobs, who's somebody that a lot of people like to hold up as a guy who, who just knew what to make and knew what to introduce to customers. And, and he had a vision and he didn't need to hear what his customers wanted because he knew what they wanted. Even Steve Jobs, many times in his career, has talked about having a deep level of understanding about who the customers are, what drives them, what motivates them, what interests them, so he could deliver to them what they need. And there's that phrase again, that don't give people what they want, give them what they need. It's a great idea, but in order to give them what they need, you need to understand them. If you don't understand them, you are not giving them what they need. And that's that's why this stuff all matters. It matters to me anyway. And if there were two two views on this video, myself and, I don't know, some some guy, Borbach, him. If there was only two video views on this video, then happy days and... That works, but uh, that's that's why we do what we do, and I'm talking about myself in the third person again, so that's nice. Um, the, the crazy continues. Anyway, thanks for listening. What are your thoughts? What are your ideas? How I, I, I'd love for this is what I talk about. Somebody who can come on and debate me. Um, the the true believer, the person who believes that listening to customers is a bad, dumb idea and should never happen. Send me a mail. I'd like to, I'd like to, I will have a friendly, honorable gentleman's debate with you. That would be a, a wonderful, a wonderful discussion. I, although I, who thinks that way? Maybe nobody. Anyway, thanks for listening.